Coronavirus, it preys on what terrifies us. Dying alone. Loved ones can't be there in the hospital to comfort family in their final moments. People can't gather for funerals for a goodbye. It compounds grief in profound ways that we just can't imagine. How do you cope? Dr. Justin Dorenzo is a licensed psychologist and joins us here on The Morning Show. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning. I just can't imagine being in that position. How do you cope? How do you deal with it? Sure. This is a really a tough one, and this is really timely for me, too, because I, 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 I just came back from Huntsville, Alabama, visiting an uncle of mine who has terminal cancer, and we had to go and make all those life, li those end-of-life decisions as well as really making things right with each other and with family. And, it's, it, and this is really the lesson today that I, that I want to project to people is you've got to, we got to be right with our loved ones and we got to make amends and, and we, we got to make sure that we have closure even before people go to the hospital because the way this illness is, is, is happening is the complications are so quick. Um, if, if somebody is getting ill or they could pass, those things happen fast. So we, and, and of course, with all the restrictions, we may not be able to, we most likely will not be able to visit them in the hospital or it will be very difficult. So again, it's really important to be right with your loved ones now. You know, you talk about hospice. It's all about being able to provide an environment where, where people can review their lives and, and, and say their sure. goodbyes and their sorries and, and, and hold hands. And, and now that's just literally gone overnight. And the people who want to be there for their loved ones when they can't, they carry this guilt. How can they get over that guilt? Because some people, you know, face it, Doc, they're going to carry it with them for a lifetime. Right. And, and, and you're so right about that, Bruce, because, because we have a primal instinct to want to hold people that are, that are suffering or that are dying. We want to hold their hand. We want to be there for them, talk to them, make things right, have closure. But with this illness, we can't do that. So because you know, touching them could certainly get us sick or even make them sicker. So what, what I recommend to people is when, when, they are, when you know a loved one is going to the hospital, send them with a memento, a transitional object is what psychologists call that. But send them with a memento. And again, make sure things are right with them beforehand. And then you can, have, you, you, you can do your best at having virtual meetings as well. And just, just know, too, that, that it's normal to be feeling this, this, this heavy guilt when you can't be there for the person. But also, i got to remind people, when, when the individual is in a state of dying, it's really about, you know, dying is a solitary process. So death is, is really about the loved ones being left behind. So know that that person is, is already, you know, the, their, their body's breaking down, and, and they probably will not be that coherent anyway. And also to remember that hospital staff, all the medical professionals, are there supporting people. Part of their job, too, is not just keeping people alive, but being there until the end with our loved ones. So our loved ones are not alone. Yeah, that's an important point. I did read yes. an article where the hospital staff said, you know what, let your loved ones know that they're not there because we are making sure that your loved ones are surrounded by love and the hospital staff. Um, maybe sure. after all is said and done, since you can't be there when they pass, go to the grave site and talk that, to those who passed. Does that, that help a little bit? That, that is so important because we, we are postponing funerals. And it's OK to have a memorial service. But then after this is all over, we can have the funerals. You can visit, visit at the grave site and celebrate people. And of course, we'll be able to bring more than 10 people together when this is over. Um, so, you know, I just want people to keep trudging forward and, and you know, share with their kids, too, that, that, that we're all part of this shared sacrifice. It's really important that we're all doing this together. We're saving lives. And even the people that are dying alone, they are also part of this shared sacrifice. And then you, not, you know, being willing to let your loved one go into the hospital and not visit them, you are also part of that shared sacrifice. We're doing this for a community. I mean, we're doing this for, for, for all, of, all, all of humanity, really, is who, it, it, is, is who we are trying to protect. So this is really great. And, and look, we all have people in our circle who you know, don't talk, and it's important that we encourage them to open up. Dr. Dorenzo, it certainly we, is. we thank you for you know, some certainly good advice. Jen, Bruce, thank you for having me.